What's up, YouTube? It's Eric, a Lions fan. Thanks for clicking on this video. This is primarily going to be a Michigan State, Penn State video here, guys. I'll I'm going to touch on here just real quick about the Detroit Lions because I didn't really watch the whole game. I was over at my parents' house and over at my relatives' house. We were um, kind of just really kind of just doing some BS, and then the, the 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 game was on in the background. But did we really all of us ever really pay attention to it? No, not really. So I do want to say this here real quick for the Lions when. When Detroit scores 30 points and the opposing defense scores 42, something is wrong. Pascaloni is going to have to do something about this, trying to get this team ready um, for different schemes, get different kind of uh, attacks that uh, the different teams are going to make. We're on a three-game losing streak with the Chiefs, uh, the Packers, and now the Vikings. I don't really necessarily know what the answer is. I'll, I will admit that. Although I'm not one of the coaches and it's not my job to really – know what the what the answers are it's Pascaloni's job to try to fix this and try to get uh try to get Detroit back up on their uh back up on the on the winning side of things so um I think they can do it they they are more than competent of doing it it's just trying to figure out what's kind of happening here and there was quite a bit of injuries on Detroit's side here too so let's not uh, let's not kind of uh, say that it's all on the defense there there was there was a key very much key injuries uh, last or yesterday uh, against the Vikings. So that's going to be my plug for the Lions. Let's go ahead and start in the Michigan State Penn State game here, guys. If you guys, this is pretty much the reason why you clicked on the video here. Uh, let's kind of drop Ronnie Bell Bell's pass here and kind of getting on his case here and whatnot. A couple of people on Twitter were saying that they ruined their season. And why did he drop the pass? It was right in his hands, all that good sort of stuff. we got to remember, guys, that Michigan players are between the ages of 18 and 22. Some of them are 23 if they're a five-year uh, five senior. So we really have to take a step back, know that these are still really very, very young adults, if not kids. You know, they're playing a professional football game, or more or less a professional football game, even though it is college. They're playing more or less a football game with talent, people with the same talent level, all that sort of stuff. So getting on Ronnie Bell at the last, um, for the last, you know, possession of the game for Michigan or second to last possession of the game uh, for Michigan isn't the real, it, it's stupid more or less. It's dumb. It's not productive, all that sort of stuff. It just makes you look like an idiot uh, on social media here, guys. So, I mean, Ronnie Bell, I mean, all the, uh, wide receivers had drops today, especially they they spotted Penn State a 21 nothing lead here, and that was pretty much the dagger in the heart for um, for the Wolverines here. They only had one half to try to play catch up on. They really couldn't really do anything wrong or anything right in the first half, and then the second half they kind of made a the defense kind of started to come back around when they actually scored a, a touchdown on their initial drive there in the second half. You could tell it woke the defense up, and the defense there kind of the defense only gave up 16 yards in the third quarter. I got written down here that was 417 to 283 in total yards going to Michigan, and with that kind of disparity, you're kind of wondering where <laughs> how, how did how did Penn State kind of rack up all their yards, kind of or rack up all their points? It was pretty much because of Hamler. He's out of Pontiac. Hamler kind of torched the Wolverines twice for um, 14 points. He do, and the Michigan secondary just could not cover this guy. He, that dude is fast. Even on television, that dude's fast. I mean, I guess he's one of the – Herb Street was talking about there. He's the fastest, if not the best, wide receiver in the Big Ten, if not the country, being the, only because he's so fast and he's really hard to tackle. As I said before, the receivers kind of dropped some passes in the first half and kind of redeemed themselves there in the second. When you're down 21 points, guys, you really can't, it's really hard for Michigan to kind of come back, and it, it was a perfect uh, a perfect ending to the night there with jumping out to a 21 point lead, and then Michigan playing catch up and getting into what was it 20 some points there, and Penn State coming back with a dagger with a touchdown to kind of seal the game. Although Penn State's defense was good in the first half, let's give them credit where credits due. They, they were they were a very good team. Uh, all actually, they're a very good all-around team there at Penn State. Even though I kind of still call them, or I kind of still have this thing in the back of my mind of Rape University uh, with the kids and all that, but kind of a little bit of a dagger right there. 
uh, kind of a little punch, gut punch there, which it's warranted. But anyway, kind of getting back to the, here, the football game, I don't necessarily know what Michigan could have done better other than make a better showing in the first half. The offense kind of still seems to sputter, especially in the first half. They can't come out and get a good drive going on here. It kind of takes them a while to get going, especially in this game. You could tell that. The offense, Gaddis and the offense are going to have to try and figure something out. We're in, what, we're halfway through the Big Ten now, if not more than halfway through. Michigan's not going to win a championship this, this season. Uh, with Patterson at the helm, I'm really kind of thinking that Jim Harbaugh is just kind of putting him in there to try to get his, get him some exposure for the NFL. And I don't necessarily know if it's going to work out for Shea Patterson. I mean, he hasn't really done much to kind of lift him up and do, uh, to, for someone to take him in the NFL draft. He'll probably become an undrafted rookie, really. I would like to really see McCaffrey or Milton kind of get a shot here because, to me, as a, as a, as a college coach or even a professional coach or any coach at any level, your job there is to win football games. It doesn't matter what kind of personnel you put out there. As long as you win football games, you don't care. As long as you get the W. And I think with Shea Patterson and the Wolverines, really, you're at the point of Michigan can beat the bad teams, but they can't necessarily beat the good teams like the Ohio States, the Penn States, uh, the Wisconsin's. Even though Wisconsin kind of lost in a, <laughs> I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I kind of seen it. I'm like, what? Illinois beat Wisconsin. What the hell's going on there? But I didn't watch that game, so I really kind of don't want to get into that. But you have your upper echelon teams here, and then you have your lower echelon teams here. Michigan can't beat, can beat the lower echelon teams, but they can't beat the upper echelon teams. And the thing with Michigan State is when that game comes on, it's going to be like, I kind of feel like that game is going to be, which team is going to be able to kind of give the game to the other one and try to see which one's going to come out to be the victor on this one? It's kind of going to be a back-and-forth game, probably not a really a very good game to watch, a Michigan-Michigan State game. It's probably not going to be uh, a good game to watch. I even might get – Indiana might win against them. That's kind of where we're at. Guys, that's kind of where I'm at here. As you can tell, my eyes are kind of watery. I've kind of gone twice in this video. That's where the jump cuts were. Um yeah, the, pretty much the, the tale of the game was Penn State jumped out to a 21 nothing league. Michigan tried to play catch-up, and it wasn't good enough. And Ronnie Bell kind of uh, dropping that pass in the end zone is probably going to be the only thing that's what kind of really looked upon or the thing that's uh, going to be the, the defining moment of the game there. And it really isn't Ronnie Bell's fault. It's everyone's fault. It's the offense's fault. It's the defense's fault. Everyone in the first half kind of just laid an egg there. So it's not all on Ronnie Bell. It's not. And let, let's stop kind of... Let's, can we just stop with this, you know, jumping on Ronnie Bell's case because he didn't score a touchdown there in the final minute? Should have never really even came to that, really. Should have been a much closer game than that. Michigan has to do a better job of kind of jumping out into the lead or jumping out to a better showing, more or less. Not necessarily a lead or anything, but have a better showing in the, in the first half, first quarter especially. All right, guys, let me know what you guys think down in the comments down below. Please consider hitting that subscribe button and make sure you guys hit that bell notification so you guys get more videos just like this one. All right, guys, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope to see you guys again soon. Take care, guys.